Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. Google Sheets allows you to insert drop-down lists in cells. This is part of a feature called data validation, and it's a feature similar to one in Excel. If you use data validation in Excel, the way Google does it will look familiar. What data validation does for you is it restricts data values and data types you can enter in specific cells. For example, if you want to type names down a name column, you don't want the column to allow you to type numbers. If you enter dates, you can restrict whether they are before or after a certain date. And if you want to pick product names from a list, that's what dropdowns are for. As part of creating custom validation rules, I'm also going to show you two ways of finding whether a value is between two other values. There's a function specific to Google Sheets and functions that will work both in Google and Excel. So let's take a look, see how it works. On this sheet, we want to enter info for the wholesale division of our fictitious company. Each column needs a different type of data. And I added the gray shading just so we know in which cells the rules will be. You don't have to do that, but it might be a good idea. Drop-down lists are probably the most used type of validation, so let's do that first. And there are two ways to bring up the task pane for inserting drop-downs. The first way I'll show you is a shortcut. Right there at the top of the variety column, I enter at dropdown. And I can just click that, and you see on the right, it brings up data validation. So that's one way to do it. I'm just going to remove the rule. I'm going to close the task pane. I'll show you another way to do it, because let's say you want data validation of a different type. Go up to the data menu, and then down here towards the bottom, choose data validation. And it also opens up. Sometimes it will open up directly to drop down. Right now it's not. It seems to be kind of inconsistent. And there are two ways to populate a drop down list. Let me show you the simple method first. I'm going to go here, add a rule, and you see there's drop downs chosen first. And we have a few options there. So I can simply go in there and say, let's say I want Blue Mountain, and optionally give it a color. And I could do any of the others and give any of these colors. It could be the same color or a different color. If I want another option, I could simply choose enter another item, and then I can continue. If I want to remove one, I can hit the trash can. If I want to reorder them, that's what these dots are for, and you can drag these up and down in the list. So that's a very simple way of doing it if you only have you know, two or three to do. But there's an easier way if you want to enter a lot of choices. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click down here, Remove Rule, so we're back to the beginning. And you notice down at the bottom, we have two tabs. The Products tab, this worksheet, has a bunch of product names already in there. We're going to use that. Let's go back to the main one. So I'm going to go and add Rule. And this is what range do I want to apply to. So I'm going to click this little grid and I'll scroll. And I want this to apply to these cells over there. So that's where it's going to be. That's where the dropdowns are going to be. Click OK. And I don't want the criteria to be drop down. I want the criteria to be drop down from a range. And what is going to populate it? So I'm going to click in here. And then I click on this little grid. Select a data range. This is the data range for where am I getting the data. So I go to Products. And now I'm going to select the list of products. Notice I'm not selecting the varieties column header, just the data itself. Click OK, and you see that gets put in there. And look at that. This now automatically populated all of those items. So that way I didn't have to do them all myself manually. I'm going to click down here on Advanced Options. Show help text for selected cell. That means whenever you click on one of those dropdowns, you could get a little pop-up help. I generally avoid that because it gets in the way, it gets kind of obnoxious. And what happens if the data is invalid? Meaning if you try to type something over the drop-down list, if you don't try to, if you don't actually use that drop-down list, the sheet can throw a warning or it could reject it and say, sorry, you're not allowed to enter in there. 
And the display, the display style, you probably want shift. That's what you normally think of as that drop down. Also, I'm not going to do for everyone, but we can put colors in just like we did before for any of these. And you can repeat colors. There's absolutely nothing uh, wrong with any of those. So several of these can reuse a color. And now I'm going to click done. And now when I go back to the form, you see here, all of these are now drop downs with all of those colors and all that. And if you need, you can, of course, always make the column wider if necessary. Okay, great. Let's talk about dates. Down column B, we want to allow dates, but only dates after January 1st, 2023. If you enter a date before then, the sheet should throw an error and not allow it. So I'm going to go back here, add a rule. What range do I want to apply to? So notice that it automatically it already put a dropdown in there, which I think is kind of annoying. I'm just going to ignore it. It's going to get replaced. I'm just going to drag down column B there, just like that. B5 to B15. That's right. Click OK. And not a dropdown. I'm going to go down here and choose date is on or after. I initially said after January 1st, but we should maybe include that date anyway. So I'm going to choose date is on or after. Today means a current date. I don't want that. I'm going to choose exact date. Click in there and I'm going to say 1 slash 1 slash 2023. And like before, if I try to enter a date before January 1st, I want to reject the input. Click done. Now I can put any of them in there. So let's say April Fool's Day. Totally fine. July 4th. Totally fine. But what if I put in a date from last year? Then it throws an error. It says, hey, sorry, that's not valid. And then that cell is simply blank. So let's go to the next column, sales goal. What I want is numbers that are at least 100. So I'm going to add a rule. What range do I want to apply to? Move this out of the way. I'm going to apply to these cells down column C. I'm going to OK it. Criteria. Again, it's always defaults or almost always defaults to drop down. So I'm going to go and choose greater than or equal to. So I'll just say 100. So sales goal has to be at least 100. And again, if the data is valid, I'm going to reject. Click done. So if we enter 100, that's fine. 3,000, that's fine. But a number that's under 100, it doesn't like it throws an error, and it leaves that cell blank. OK, now let's look at the last two columns, company and contact. What we want is to make sure to accept only text. And the text needs to be at least two characters. We don't want initials. And they also can't be more than 20 characters. So a cat walks across the keyboard or something, it's going to reject it. Now, I'm going to show you two ways of accomplishing this, which is why I have the two columns. For the company column, we'll use the isBetween function, which is specific to Google Sheets, and it also uses the and function, the length function, and the isText function, all of which work in Google and Excel. Now, for the contact name column, I'll show you how to do it without the isBetween function, just in case you need to use both Google and Excel. Now, before we do any of this, let's see how all these functions work. So the isBetween function, as I said a moment ago, is specific to Google Sheets. There is no such function in Excel. And the syntax is, we say, equals is between, And then we have three required arguments. The first is the value that we're checking. Second is, what's the lowest number that's OK? Third argument is, what's the highest number that's OK? And you see we have two optional arguments. And we could put those in to decide do we want the upper and lower bounds to be included? By default, they are, so 
in this exercise, I'm just not going to use them. Let me give you a couple of examples here. So let's say in cell B5, we have a value of 20 and we run is between and look at cell B5 and say, okay, lower bound is 10, the upper bound is 100. So it's going to return a value of true, right? Because 20 is somewhere in between 10 and 100. Now, let's say in B5, we have a value of 200 and we run the same is between on there. It's going to return a value of false because obviously 200 is outside of that range. The next function we're going to use is length, abbreviated LEN. And by the way, this is a method in many program languages. This simply tells us how many characters are we looking at. And the syntax is very straightforward, very simple, equals length, and we feed it a value or a cell or something to check. So as a simple example, let's say cell B5 has the text dragon, and we run the length function on cell B5, and it returns 6 because dragon has six letters in it. Pretty simple. The third function we're going to use is is text, and that simply tells us, hey, this thing that we're looking at is that text, yes or no. And the syntax is also pretty simple, equals is text, and we feed it a value or a cell to look at. So using the same example we had a moment ago, if cell B5 has a value of dragon and we run is text on B5, it returns a value of true because dragon is a word, it's text. But if cell B5 has a value of 22 and we run is text on B5, it returns a value of false because 22 is not text. The fourth function we're going to look at is the AND function. And this is what's called a Boolean operator, if you've ever encountered those before. And the syntax, we say equals AND, and then we feed it a whole bunch of conditions. Whether you have one condition or 50 conditions, this function is going to look to see if they are all true. So if you have 50 conditions and just one out of those 50 conditions evaluates to false, then this function is going to return a value of false. So uh, as an example, let's say if cell B5 has a value of 10.5 and we run the AND function, we say B5 is greater than 5 and B5 is less than 20. So those are two different conditions. Well, this is going to return a value of true because 10.5 is greater than 5 and it's less than 20. But with the same 10.5 and that same cell B5, if we use those same two conditions, and equals and, and we're going to say B5 is greater than 5 and it's less than 20, also we are saying that it's an integer. The mod, I'm not even going through that function in detail here. That stands for modulus, and this is a way we can determine if a number is an integer, if it's a whole number. So we're saying b5 is greater than 5, it's less than 20, and it's a whole number, then this and condition, this and function is going to return a value false because 10.5 is not a whole number. So let's create a custom condition for the company column. We want only text and it should be at least two letters, right? Because we don't want any initials and a maximum of 20 letters. So I'm going to go and add a rule. And we're going to apply it here to arrange. Let's move this out of the way. And we're going to select from this cell all the way down to that cell. So that's fine from D5 to D15. Click OK. And go to criteria. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom, and we're going to choose Custom Formula Is. So here's where we put in that is and and is between. So I'm going to say equals and, open up the parenthesis, and so we're going to look at a couple of different criteria. Nested inside and, we're going to use is between. So is between, remember, we have a value to check and we have an upper bound and lower bound. So the value we're going to check is the length, the number of characters in cell D5. So we close the parenthesis for the length function, comma, minimum value is 2, comma, maximum value is 20. Now we're going to close the parenthesis for the is between function. So we're back in the AND function. So our first argument for the AND function is 
what's the length, how many characters are typed in, comma. And now the second criterion we're looking at in the AND function is we're going to say is text d5. So we've established how many characters there are. Are they text? So we've closed the is text parenthesis. Now I close the outer parenthesis for the AND function. And like before, if the data is invalid, we want to reject it. Click done. Now let's test it out. Now I'll just type in, let's say, something like that. Three letters is fine. Two letters is fine. If I put in something like that is fine. Now what happens if I try to put in just one letter? Okay, doesn't like it because we have to have a minimum of two. If we have a cat walking across the keyboard and we have a lot more than 20 characters, also, that's not valid. Okay, now let's apply the same logic to the contact column, but using the method that will work in Excel also. So I'm going to, once again, down the bottom, click Add Rule. And what range do I want to apply to? Click that little grid, move this out of the way here, click. And now I'm going to select from E5 down to E15, so that gets populated in there. Click OK. Criteria, we don't want to drop down or text or any of that. And we're going to go to the bottom, just like we did for the previous column. We're going to insert a custom formula. So this custom formula, I'm going to say equals and. We're going to start off just like we did for the last column. But we don't need an is between for this. I'm going to say, okay, let's look at the length of E5. And that should be greater than or equal to 2. Right? At least two characters. We don't want any initials. Comma. The next criterion for the AND function, we're going to look at the length of E5. And that should be less than or equal to to 20. So now we have an upper bound and a lower bound. Third criterion that we're going to look at in the AND function is, is text. And is cell E5 text or not? So I'm going to close the parenthesis for is text. Now I'm going to close the outer parenthesis for the AND function. And like before, if the data is invalid, we're going to reject it. Click done. Now let's try it. So just like before, Three characters are fine. Two characters are fine. A single character, that's no good. Some stuff that's in between two characters and 20 characters. And also, if we have the cat walking across the keyboard, that's not right. Oh, also numbers. If I try to put in numbers, it doesn't like it there. And it's not going to like it here either. So those are two different ways we can control that we want text and how many letters of text will we accept. When you're inserting the formula in the custom formula box, it might seem a little weird that you're examining the value of the cell you're putting the formula in. If you did that in a cell on a worksheet, you'd get an error because that would be a circular reference. But it works here because you're inserting the formula in the data validation task pane, not in the cell itself. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between Sheets.